Uh, Ryan Lambert. Uh, I am in De Pere, Wisconsin, which is a suburb of Green Bay. Uh, born and bred, grew up just blocks from Lambeau Field. Um, and yeah, I'm 32 years old, been doing real estate for uh, just over two years now. The biggest problem I had uh, before Tom's boot camp was probably consistency. Consistency, definitely. I mean, I knew that I needed to create a schedule because I got two really young kids um, and I was bartending as well at the time. And I just, I had so much stuff going on. I know if I didn't keep a schedule, I couldn't keep myself honest. Well, that's been a game changer. So I've been doing that ever since I went to your boot camp and making sure that there's at least 10 to 15 hours of real estate stuff on there to keep me moving forward. Even if it's small things, just making sure that I'm able to move forward with them. Like what's changed after the implementation boot camp? Um, one, I guess here actually the big thing was mood. Mood, I mean, because we're, we're still in the pandemic right now, but um, I went to the boot camp back in November and I was all jazzed up and I was actually doing pretty well doing things all the way until the pandemic hits. And I get sent home from work. My kids get sent home from school because their day care closes. My wife gets sent home from school because she's a teacher. Now we're all at home. We're trying to figure out what things are, right? So we're both working from home, trying to take care of our two and four year old, right? We're tearing the place apart for two months, right? So it was just, I was just in a bad spot. And then your June boot camp came up and I wasn't going to do it, but I'm like, you know what? I need this. So I went to the boot camp virtually and uh, obviously a lot of the same material, but just gets you back in that zone. Like, all right, I can start doing this stuff. And my kids went back to daycare right before the week before the boot camp, And I'm like, all right, I need to get back into this. And again, it was starting to, all right, here's the stuff I know that I needed to do. I knew it back in November. I'm going to do it again. I need to get back on that horse and my mood flipped and now I'm consistent and I've been just, doing what I need to do. Right. So that, that boot camp, it just helped me get right back into that mindset and get my confidence back to, Hey, yeah, I did this before I can do it again, but I can do better using some of the stuff in the boot camp. I, I almost didn't sign up for Tom's training because I mean, I, I really don't know if there was a reason why I guess you're skeptical. You're always skeptical, right? Cause we've had gurus, right. Come to the Rias every now and then, and, and they always have something to offer. And, and it's not, not to say none of them have value because I'm sure a lot of them have value, but I don't know. I just, there wasn't really, I just said, all right, I'm going to go to Tom Saturday uh, one. And I did. And I thought you were just uh, very straightforward, very honest. Uh, I mean, nothing you said seemed ridiculous, like a stretch. It all sounded like stuff that, hey, I can do this. It all seems pretty straightforward and common sense, but you're packaging it in a nice thing. Why don't I go learn more? And I just, I, don't, I just jive with you right away. I just liked your personality. I liked how you came across. Uh, very, like I said, very honest, very professional, very um, approachable. Uh, and just, just like I said, it seemed like an all around nice guy, an awesome guy. I'm like, right, well, I mean, it's not, and it wasn't like it was a huge expense either, right? And the lifetime attendance thing, that's ridiculous. Like, why do you do that? <laughs> uh, it's, it's just like, how do you not get value out of this thing if you attend it once, even if you attended it once every two or three years, you're going to get value out of it because things change. So to me, it was a no brainer. Um, so yeah, I'm glad I did it. Uh, the single biggest thing that changed is my consistency, you know, having that schedule, uh, following the process, obviously continuing like when I'm on calls, I got right next to my thing here at cold call every day. I got the deal worksheets. So making sure I use those. Here's one from a call today that was a shorter call than I would have liked, but I did start filling it out before the guy uh, had to go. Um, so that too, just, just being set up for success, right? You got the schedule. I got the worksheets here. I got everything I need. Now I just need to make sure I follow the schedule and do it turn on the phone and start dialing. Like that's it. The good things happen. Right. So I know, I know you've talked about, you got to make 15 offers roughly before you get the one deal. I hit on deal number seven or offer number seven. I made after the boot camp. I hit a deal. It, it sounds like Ryan, you're saying a lot of uh, consistency. You don't seem to struggle with discipline. Was it just lack of a system or did you need a little push? I mean, what, what? Yeah. I needed a little push. And honestly, discipline is a good word for it. I mean, there, there was a lack of discipline, right? Cause I'd, I'd almost make up excuses for, all right, here, I got this going on. I, I even if I had time to cold call, I'm going to do this instead. Right. Because cold calling isn't fun. It's not fun. Like eventually you go numb to it. You still feel it, but you're, you right. don't react as strongly. 
Right. It's, it's more or less of a, well, they must have been having a bad day. What's wrong with them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that is, I'll tell you, it, it's tricky. The number of students that tell me that's the main, that's one of their big mindset shifts is that it's okay to be rejected and it's okay oh, to yeah. be rejected a lot and consistently. But I'll tell you, humans, and then probably particularly as men, we're not, we're not wired for that naturally. We hate rejection. We spend our whole life avoiding it and trying not to be rejected. And so to actually embrace it and see it as a good thing is a really, it's a seismic shift. Right, right, yep. And like you said, no one likes to be rejected, but you just gotta, that's, what is it, the SWs, right? So what, some will, some won't, so what, next. Next. Um, yeah, honestly, the negotiation side of things, um, that has been great. I mean, that's, I probably listen to your negotiation training at least six or seven times. Uh, at least. So that's been my favorite. I'm not a big reader. Um, I do read, but I read so slow. Um, like probably like a second grade level is what I joke about. But uh, I listen to your audio all the time. I probably listen to it at least four times all the way through, but I, I mainly been focusing on your negotiation stuff. That was probably the best help was the negotiation techniques and the tactics in there, trying those out. The biggest win. So we did get a wholesale deal under contract and we're closing on it in three weeks. Uh, it was a, a single family house in De Pere, uh, right across the street from the river. Uh, it was an expired listing. So uh, I hit those up hard after the boot camp. That was the first list I called and uh, had a couple good conversations, still working on a few of them from that list as follow-ups. But yeah, it was a wholesale deal. We're going to, uh, we're going to, well, we're grossing 17,660 on it. Mm -hmm. 